gravity. <clears throat> All that by simply understanding how pine cones kiss. <laughs> and thanks to Ian, who is incredibly de de dedicated. We happen to have the pine cones right here. <laughs> hmm, I don't know how are they going to kiss. We'll have to get, get work on that. You know, more romance here. <clears throat> so, Valerie said, I need to make this story personal. No uh, advanced science. She says, the words have to be simple, and this has to be a very personal story. So, I'm going to tell you a personal story. I was studying the golden mean ratio, actually. That's what I was studying when I was a kid, actually. I was building models like this 30 years ago. In fact, I started distributing that kit. And so Valerie said, tell them how you got interested in this. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell you how I got interested in this. First, you need to understand why the golden mean ratio was so interesting to me. Remember, <clears throat> you never study geometry just to study the numbers. No. You actually only study geometry for one reason only, and that is to learn what waves are going to do. Truly. Otherwise, you get in this profound confusion called numerology, and you don't understand the difference to physics. Pattern recognition is valuable, but only if it predicts what waves are going to do. So, this is a beautiful sequence. It's just... In fact, it is our definition of beauty in most disciplines. The definition of beauty in most disciplines called golden mean ratio is a particular progression. But I'm going to explain to you why it's beautiful because of what it predicts about waves. So here's the golden mean ratio. 0.618, 1, 1.618, 2.618. So in this sequence of numbers, which is infinite, you could add any two and get the next number forever. Or... You could take this number, 1.618, and multiply it by any number and get the following number. So 0.618 times 1.618 is 1.0, or 1.618 squared is 2.618. It's kind of cool. <laughs> However, why is that more than just beauty? Why is it the solution to Einstein's dilemma? I'll tell you why. What physics failed to discover, and this is actually almost catastrophic to our culture. In fact, our culture may cease to exist specifically because physics has been so stupid about one simple, simple measurable fact that if you cause a very large number of waves to interfere, <coughs> if you cause those waves to interfere <coughs> in octave relationship, powers of two, you create... The total output power, you create maximum destructive wave interference, which is why when you play octaves in your headphones, in your music, you actually create dissociation in brain waves, separateness between the hemispheres. Because octaves is the maximum way waves can hurt each other, actually. It's the maximum destructive wave interference possible is called the octave. All of Western music based on the octave. Do you think we have a problem? Yes. Do we need to do something about it? Yes. How are we going to fix this? Let's discuss it later. The opposite of that is if you cause a very large number of waves to interfere that are golden, golden ratio in frequency, the output power is maximum. So the solution to maximum constructive wave interference is the golden mean ratio. It's a simple software that anybody can write Nonlinear interference, golden mean ratio is the generalized solution to constructive wave interference. You'd think that would be trivial, wouldn't you? But modern physics does not know. That, to me, is almost as shocking as knowing that your physics teacher doesn't know why an object falls to the ground. It's shocking. It's just shocking. It's, it's so horrible that physics didn't know. Because, obviously, if Einstein had known... He, in fact, Einstein stated the problem. Infinite constructive wave interference is my problem, and that's why I don't know what the unified field is. That's Einstein's words. Really. And this is the literal, precise solution. Recently, Nassim Haramein con confirmed this when he discovered the golden mean ratio is the solution to black holes and gravity, all this good stuff. But I, I actually presented at a physics conference before he did, but it's okay. It's all, Nassim's a great guy. Anyway, so... <clears throat> This is golden mean ratio geometry here. And this is constructive wave interference. And this is octaves. 
And this is destructive wave interference. Oct is tetraocta cube. Golden ratio is dodeca ecosa. The two categories of symmetry that we just discussed. Okay, <clears throat> so you can see why I was studying golden mean ratio because <laughs> it's the solution to compression. Infinite constructive compression is the name for the unified field solution. Now, of course, no one told Einstein what a fractal is, and every physicist can tell you today that the only infinite compression we have is fractal. Any software engineer could tell you that as well. But sadly, all these brilliant people around <laughs> never even asked the question, what does a 3D fractal look like for waves? Hint, hint, hint. <laughs> and, oh, let's write an equation for the radii of hydrogen. <laughs> That's what I wrote. It's very simple, actually, but it works. So, anywho, <clears throat> going back to Valerie, my partner, who said, now, you've got to make this personal and fun, and so how did you get interested? So, I had been studying the golden mean ratio, and my buddy, Dr. Karatkov, <clears throat> here, here's Dr. K from St. Petersburg. He's a hero. <clears throat> I like him. We have a lot of fun together. And he discovered, he was sent to St. Petersburg, and there's this group of kids called World Without Blindness Project in Russia, <clears throat> who are being taught to see without their eyes. And it turns out that a large group of kids are able to see without... You can tune into dozens of television programs in Russia and you see these kids. <laughs> They're seeing without their eyes all the time. Well, it's cool. So, <clears throat> Dr. Karakov was hired, contracted, to measure how are they doing this. So, sure enough, he, he got out his gizmos and he measured the population of kids in Russia who could see without their eyes. He says, oh, people who can see without their eyes, the primary way you identify a person who's able to see without their eyes is you measure their brain waves, you check the harmonics of their brain waves, and if their brain waves are in golden mean ratio, that's the primary way you can find out if they're seeing without their eyes. <laughs> when I heard Karatkov measured this, I fell off my chair. It made my day, made my week, made my year. <laughs> it was so cool. <laughs> so I says, hey, we're on to something here. <laughs> anyway, there's other things you measure. But this was the primary indicator of the ability to have peak perception. Now later, I wrote software to teach people how to have golden ratio in their brainwaves called the Bliss Tuner. And the largest bank in Australia... ANZ Bank here in Melbourne is using my system. They purchased it. When you sell it to bank managers, you call it peak perception, by the way. Same thing, the bliss tuner, but you don't have to, you know, it's a language issue. But peak perception actually is this ability to use golden ratio. So what does it look like? And there's a long history of using golden.